some of them. Uh, I just want you to know we love you. And you know who you are. You've lost loved ones. Um, my dear sister, Lady Natalie Lennon, the Roger, the uh, Lennon family. Um, they lost a cousin just recently. And um, it's amazing. I, I'll say this and I'll move on. I was um, coming on 275 yesterday and they taped me back there, but I was probably driving a little faster than I should. And a, and a guy got right in front of me with a motorcycle. He had to be going at least 80 or 90. And he lift that thing up. Going about 80 or 90, he had to be going 80 or 90. And I'm going to tell you how I know he had to be going about 80 or 90. But he lift that thing up on one wheel and rode for about about half a mile, I, I backed off of it. I, I got my feet off of the, the gas because, um, you know, I used to be young, but I thank God for old age now, or whatever you want to call it. And, and I've been a risk taker all of my life. Some of you guys were risk takers too. And some of you all wasn't risk takers, and that's fine too. But um, I guess when we get older, we're a little bit more careful about, there's certain things I just don't, wouldn't even try anymore. That makes sense now, um, Sister Lisa? Now, when I was young, I might have would have tried that. When I was probably um, 17, 19. But, yeah. Um, who in their right mind would lift a motorcycle going 90 miles per hour and, and ride on one wheel going down the road? I back way off of the gas because um, I didn't want to see. I didn't want to see it if he had an accident, and I sure didn't want to run over it if he had an accident. But that's the world in which we live today. Young people are this they, they they're risk takers. They take too many risks. And so on that note, I have to preach, I have to share with you today because uh, I believe the time is 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 um is coming to a close and and, and I want to say to all of the uh, men of God. Um, happy Father's Day. I want to say to the church, thank you all for doing such a splendid job on yesterday um, for the youth. Um, it's been a part of Education Day. But I want to say we have to include Juneteenth into our annual celebration. Let me tell you why. It was and 1862, when the Emancipation of Proclamation was signed by Abraham Lincoln. 1864, when the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. Two and a half years later, when Major General Granger rode into Texas, in the Galveston, and told them, you got to let these slaves go. In other words, Texas had 250,000 slaves, and they were never going to be free. It took Major General Granger and the Union soldiers to ride to Texas to free slaves two and a half years after slavery was supposed to have ended. And so what? And so what July the 4th, 1776 is to America 
June 19, 1865 is to us. Because until all of us are free, ain't none of us free. Hallelujah. So we recognize Juneteenth. And what is Juneteenth? June the 19th. They put it together. That's why it's called Juneteenth. And I just want you to know that. Know your history. And if you know your history, you will never have to worry about his story. Because that's what history is. Stay with me. I'm, I'm still talking. History is his story. He write the book, so he tell it the way he want to tell it. History. Okay. Make, we, you get the tape, hopefully after the message is over, and you can listen to it again, all right? You, you, you little talkers in here. Amen. One, one day God going to call y'all to preach and ain't nobody going to ever listen to you. <laughs> whatsoever you sow, you just preach it away and people go, yep, yep. Doing everything. All right. I better go ahead and share. You you ready, um, Staff Sergeant? You ready? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. I'd like to share a message with you today called All in the Family. All in the Family. Some of y'all remember the 1970 sitcom, the, 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 um, the, the picture, the movie, the sitcom called All in the Family. All in the Family. A man by the name of Archie Bunker and his wife Edith. They were a typical family of their day, interacting with other groups, showing their true colors in, in every demeanor. And it was very popular because we watched it every Saturday. And I would be at my grandmother's house. You got to get quiet a little bit because we all wanted to see it and she might be watching it with us too. All in the family is really what life is about for you and I today. The Bible tells us, out of one blood begot he all nation of men. So what you see today is really a family. We are a family because we all came from Adam. Out of one blood had he begot all nations. We all are some kin. The, the, the farthest person away from you is probably your 50th cousin. And on top of that, the Bible tells us, the Lord said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And he gave man dominion over everything. And the Bible says, so created he them. That's what God did. And so, the Bible tells us that God formed man from the dust of the earth. And he breathed into his nostril. And man became a living soul. And, God made two great and after God great gave and us two man great and then woman, and he gave us headship. Hallelujah. Thank God for headship. Amen. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says that he would have us to know that at the head of every man is Christ. And at the head of the woman is the man. And at the head of Christ is God. That's the headship from a biblical perspective. Whether you like it or not. And the Bible tells us furthermore that God said, 
You only have I known of all of the families that are upon the earth. You only have I known. God had his people. They were a special people. They were a royal priesthood. They were a holy nation unto him who called them out of darkness into a marvelous light. He said, you only have I known. The word known described intimacy. He had a relationship with a special people. Are you a part of that, that, that special relationship that he has with people today? Amen. He ain't forcing nobody to come. But the Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. You can be a part of that family. And so, in olden times, there was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And throughout the Bible, it was always all in the family. God is a family God. There was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and we come to the New Testament. There was Peter and Andrew. They were brothers. There was James and, and John. They were brothers. We find throughout the scriptures, families, because God wanted it to be all in the family. That's why the Bible says, how can you say you love God and hate your brother? Is it supposed to be all in the family? But you know there are some people that don't treat their family right. Hate on their own family. I ain't talking about them 50th cousin. I'm talking about the person sitting right next to them. Stranger asks you for a dollar, you can't go in your pocket quick enough. Your family member asks you for a dollar. I, I, I can't find it. I, I, I don't think I've got one today. It's amazing. The Bible said, be careful how you deal with your own kind. It's talking about family. You have to learn how to love your family. Never will forget when my sons, I call my, these are my sons, when they were young, when they got jobs, I said, make sure you give your mom something now. Because... You can't live in no house and don't give your mom nothing. See, they're paying all these bills. You think every time you flick the switch, the light's supposed to come on. She need to let them lights go off so when you flick that switch, you know. Hallelujah. You got to give her something. You think the, the tissue that's in that restroom, you think you just get it out of the cabinet when, when it runs out. Amen. She need to let it run out one time so you realize, hello somebody. Amen. Amen. You have to realize the importance of supporting and helping your own family. Because after all, isn't it all in the family? The Lord said these words in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. He said, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. There's only one name in heaven and earth whereby we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. You see, in, in, in Jewish history, Jews only had one name. Abraham's name was what? Abraham. What was the rest of it? That was it. Abraham. Isaac's name was what? Jacob's name was what? Peter's name was what? Andrew's name was what? James' name was what? John's name was what? They only had one name. And neither is there salvation in any other name. The, the family of God only have one name, and that name is Jesus. And neither is there salvation in any other name whereby we must be saved. You have to come through Jesus. The Bible is very clear. It's supposed to be all in the family. So the Bible tells us in Ephesians 3 and 15, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, is Jesus' name. That's why we pray in that name. We baptize in that name. Hallelujah. When we have say grace, it's in that name. Everything is in that name. 
And neither is there salvation in any other. Today as we celebrate Father's Day, I want to say to all of the men of Emmanuel Temple and across the globe today, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. We know from studies that involved dads improve children's life emotionally, socially. Their well-being is always better when they have a father who is present and active in their lives. We know that to be a fact. Hallelujah. And father's absence is the biggest issue facing black America today. The absentee father. But I have a, a resolution for you. If there's no father in the home, bring him to church. Amen. Bring him to church where we can be those surrogate fathers, those whatever you want to call us, because I enjoy my role. And, 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 and many of my sons and my daughters, they look at me as a father. And they don't mind asking me whatever it is. I, I never will forget, I got a picture of Deacon Critchlow. I didn't, I should have put it in my video, but it's him dancing with his granddaughter. I don't know where they were at. <laughs> But I've been just waiting to put it up there so I can count it. Um, but he hasn't only been a father to his own daughters, but now he's also being there for his granddaughters. And and they were at some something formal, and he's out there dancing with them. You didn't know I had that picture, did you? I should have put it in there. I should have put it in there because I've been wanting to kind of rag on him a little bit about that, but. He's a good, good granddad, good granddad. And that's what we're trying to do now. We know the need, we know the need, there is a need. There are certain states like Mississippi has one of the highest absentee father lists. 36% uh, in Mississippi, 34% in Louisiana, 30% in Alabama, children whose father had just walked away. And don't think men um, won't walk away. What you have to do is don't give them nothing to walk away with. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah, didn't get that, did you? Yeah. Keep your clothes on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, it got real quiet. I only heard about three or four amen. <laughs> but I'll say it again. Keep your clothes on. <laughs> Wait till he prove himself. Amen. And he put a ring on it. Amen. I'm preaching good now. Amen. Hallelujah. When he put a ring on it, oh, he wanted. Can I get a witness up in here? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we see this thing of absenteeism is hurting our families all across the nation. 23.6% of children... Um, have absent fathers. That was in 2014, about a decade ago. It could be worse now. And listen, the facts are, children living with females at the head of the house, there's about a 47.6% of poverty. Because there are many reasons why. Sometimes it's because the government and companies don't want to pay women what men get. But how many believe that a woman's pay ought to be equal to a man's pay? I only heard one eight man up in here. I want my wife to earn what I earn or more. Cause the more, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of God. The more she may, the more I can take. No, I'm just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. I, I don't take, she don't want to do all the taking. She takes everything. The 100%. <laughs> I, I saw a man years ago sitting on the porch when he would get paid. 
his wife would buy him a soda water and a pack of cigarettes. And I looked at that man and I said, Lord, that'll never be me. I'm just, I, I, I don't smoke, so I don't even get the cigarettes. I just get the soda water and I'm just having fun. That's just a joke. That's just a joke. That's just a joke. That's just a joke. Amen. Amen. So, so, so. But if you got someone that's good and they're frugal and they will save the money, give it to them. Else you'll be sleeping on the bridge. If you got somebody who's good at saving, that's who should be keeping the money. Not the spendthrift. Amen? Amen. That's just wisdom. Amen. But some people, they, 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 they don't believe in that. They think just because they got on a pair of britches, they should be running everything. Well, you 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 gonna run yourself right out of a home and in, and, and into a, a shelter somewhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Bishop Fohan is a, a smart man, whether you know it or not. And if you have someone who is very frugal and know how to say, let them handle the money. Amen. 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 Well, you don't have to say amen. I, I, I say amen. Now, 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 some of you all, I can't help all of y'all because, you, you know, you don't see it as you all being a team as a couple. You see it as yours and mine. That's not biblical. Yours and mine. The two shall become one flesh. This is what the Bible said. It is amazing how some people, they like to pick and choose what they want to believe in the Bible and what they don't want to believe. But either you believe God's word and the inerrancy of God's word and it's all God's word, or you can believe a lie and be damned. That's what the scripture says. And some people, they don't believe it all. They, they, something is, somebody has fooled them. Listen, when it comes to fathering, the absence of fathering, most intractable social ills affecting children comes from the lack of fathering. Mothers have always been there, by the way. Now, we got a few dead beat, but... <laughs> Mothers have always been there. They've been the backbone of the family. We know that. Look at these mighty women of God. But we must continue to talk to men about being good fathers, being there for their children. Listen, higher quality father-daughter relationships keep those young girls from being risky and risque. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You, you, you. If a father's there, she can go sit on his lap and talk to him. Yeah. Because that's what she needs. But when you starve her of the relationship with a dad, she goes sit on any old bum's lap. I'm preaching good today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that that higher quality men, I was trying to say, everybody say higher quality men. See, some people say, Lord, just give me somebody tall, dark, and handsome. They wait about a year and they say, Lord, just give me somebody tall and dark. Wait another year and say, Lord, if he can just fog a mirror. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, I, nothing from nothing. And you got to have something. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Praise the name of God. <laughs> if you want to be with me. <laughs> Amen. Quiet. I, I deal with you after service. <laughs> okay. So listen, the church is the best place in the world for fathering. 
Because so many men are just dying to be your father figure. That man that you need in your life. We look forward to it here. That's why we encourage you, ladies, to bring the children. Let us bond with them. Let us help them. Let us encourage them. Let us inspire them to be all they can be. We can do it. And we don't mind doing it. You know, the greatest thing ever happened to me is I had men who mentored me. I had men who discipled me. You know, discipleship is, a, is an art. It's, it's where you take people and you train them for godly service. Now, I, I told you about some of the um, leaders I had. They were, they were brash, unapologetic. I told you all a week ago about the two ministers that were sitting here, uh, Elder Condry and Minister Condry, two brothers. And uh, both of my pastors, they, they, they spend their time building churches on the weekend and, and, and plenty of free labor, you know. My, my pastor in Tampa, Bishop Robinson, he would say, um, El Forehand, um, Minister Forehand, um, come and go with me to talk in the spring. I'm building a church over there. And I think um, he was right. He was building a church because <laughs> when we got there, wasn't nobody but me and him there. <laughs> and he had his big old pile of blocks. And he was laying the blocks, and he wanted me to pick the blocks up and take them, bring them to him. Those blocks, I forget, they must have wore about 12 pounds each. I'm not sure how much they weighed. But after you pick them blocks up, for, for over half a day, two blocks at a time. Um, my, my arms was aching by, by 2 o'clock. I couldn't even hardly feel my hands, my arms. <laughs> and I started complaining. I said, where Brother Eddie? Where Brother Andy? My pastor said two words. He said, shut up. <laughs> and guess what I did? And when he got some more blocks. <laughs> these men, they mentored me. They taught me. To love God and to respect authority and to do what I'm told to do. And that's a missing art today in the lives of men. You even say something to a man and he don't like it, you probably never see him again. But who loses in that regard? Well, they both lose. They both lose. But you have to learn to let people mentor you. Even women let people mentor you. If they are godly, let them mentor you. I'm going to push on now. Listen. This is what the Lord said. I know what happened in your home. I know that they weren't there for you. But I promise you this. I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters. This is what the God of heaven says. The God of the universe said, I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. God wants to be your dad. He wants to be there for you. He knows the hurt. He knows the condition that you have had to go through. He wants to be a father to you. And he said, listen, in Psalm 68 and verse 5, I'll be a father to the fatherless. To you all who never had a dad. He wasn't there. You know, I've heard a hundred times, he ain't never done nothing for me. But he did something now. Because if he didn't do nothing, you wouldn't be here. And, 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 and let me talk to you all. Stop beating a dead horse. Because some of you still talking about what dad didn't do. Stop beating a dead horse. The man dead. Leave him alone. Okay? Let him alone. Listen, listen. Listen. I'm going to be a father in a moment. Listen. Amen. Amen. Well, that's my last slide. I guess it's about time for me to cut off here.
We need dad. We need fathers. We need men to be men. And let me tell you something. If you got children and they're not with you, they're your children. You still need to take care of them. Hallelujah. Are you paying your child support? Do whatever you got to do to take care of them children. If they didn't ask to come here, you the dad. You're the one responsible. Many years ago when I met him, one of the ministers that belonged to our church, no one had to run him down and put him on child support. He went and put himself on child support. And when he met other young men that had children, he said, let me teach you something. Go and put yourself on child support. That child didn't ask to come here. And let me say one other thing as I close. Some people have wondered. They say, when an unwed woman come into church and she's pregnant or someone get pregnant, you give them a baby shower. I sure do. You know why? That child ain't done nothing wrong. That child still need clothes. That child still need diapers. They still need formula. And that child ain't done nothing wrong. And then later on, you hypocrite. You're going to try to get that person to join your church. When you're the first one to show them rejection, you hypocrite you. You, 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 you a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. You want somebody to join your church. And that same child, you rejected baby formula. Mm -hmm. No diaper. Mm -hmm. I think you can tell I'm pretty passionate about that. And let me tell you something. If you're going to do that, what happened when you sinned? Did God do you the same way? Did he do you the same way? Or did he forgive you? And he say, I cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. So far as I removed it from you. But when my child sinned, you didn't treat him like that. Thank you. That's why we do it. And other people tell me, oh, it's your forehand, boy. You give your baby shower. I sure will. It's a what? Baby shower. Are you listening to me? It's a baby shower. It's for the baby. And, and, and other folks, they don't want to give nothing to the baby. Then yeah, later on, I want to baptize you. You already baptized me. You baptized me before I even got here. You denied me formula. You denied me. Diapers, pampers. And now you want to baptize me? Baptize this. <laughs> Amen. Well, I better cut off before. Amen. I am cut off. Amen. Is our God? How forgiving?